It's 5.30. We'll go ahead and uh, case of emergency evacuation, the alarm will sound. Everyone should exit the building by the nearest stairwell in a safe and effective manner. The nearest stairwell, stairwell is blocked by smoke. Use the other stairwell. Do not use the ele elevator. Once you've reached the main floor, follow the exit signs to exit the building and quickly proceed away from the building. Be mindful of others evacuating and of emergency vehicles. At this time, call the roll. Caskey, Here. Cole, Here. Daly, Here. Hedrick, Here. Miller, Here. ex officio member Teague. Here. We have 100%. At this time, we will hold an election for chairman. The floor is now open for nominations. Just go ahead, anybody has one speak up? Commissioner Hedrick. I would like to recommend Ms. Daly. Daly, is there a second? Okay. Commissioner Miller seconds. Other nominations? Commissioner Daly? Yes. I was going to nominate somebody else, but I guess I won't now. Thank you. <laughs> Mill Commissioner Miller, second. Okay. <clears throat> okay. We have Commissioner Daly nominated as chairman, made by Commissioner Hedrick, seconded by Commissioner Miller. Chair will now stand for motion to close nominations. Commissioner Hedrick moves. Is there a second? second. Commissioner Cole seconds. Those in favor of closing the nominations say aye. aye. Opposed say no. Nominations are closed. There'll be a roll call vote. I'm going to call your name. If you wish to vote for the nominee daily, say daily. If not say abstain. Commissioner Caskey. Daly. Commissioner Cole. Daly. Commissioner Daly. Abstain. Commissioner Hedrick. Daly. Commissioner Miller. Daly. Commissioner Daly, you are the chair. If you'd like to come forward. And I was so comfy here. All righty. Well, mine's still on over here. Yeah, well, leave, leave it. I'll, okay, I'll shut it off. Uh, let's see. Ask you. I was going to nominate you. <laughs> that should That's light everybody up. Well, let's see. All right. Here you go. Thanks. Good luck. Yeah, I need <laughs> Okay. Okay, now the floor will be open for the election of vice chairman. Does anybody want to nominate anybody for vice chairman? I'd like to nominate Tom Cole. Okay, do I have second? Well, uh, before we get that part, I'm gonna be out of commission for the next month because of health reasons, so I think it's better if somebody else is the... We're going to... Good chair. luck. So I guess, can I decline that? Or <laughs> uh, maybe I should ask Mr. Teague now, is that going to be a problem, if he's going to be out the next month? Yeah, I don't see, see how it would be, as long as we have a quorum and can make a decision. We just have to report back to the full commission by March. So, um, that quickly? That was what I was thought in the resolution? I thought it said in something I read that May it was when Well, it that's the final deadline. It has to be approved by the full commission body. But as far as this, uh, the ad hoc committee, uh, that was what was in the resolution that would report back to the, uh, report back to the full commission on March the 19th meeting. So. We were ideally in the November meeting, or I guess the December's meeting. At that point in time, the idea was to appoint uh, 
committee members at that point in time, and that just got, it fell through the cracks, so that pushes back to January, so we lost a month right there. Uh, Mr. Cole, how do you feel about doing this by phone, or would you rather not? I'd, I'd rather not, because I'm expecting two weeks for sure to be, I mean, down hard. Right. So I'd rather not be the stumbling block, I okay. guess so. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cole has pulled his name from the nominations. Do I hear another nomination for vice chairman? Nominate Jeff Hedrick. Okay, Mr. Kasky, I didn't understand what you said. Nominate Jeff Hedrick. Oh, Mr. Hedrick, is that what, who yes. you nominated? Yes. Okay. Are there any other nominations? I'll second it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I did get that out of order. Okay, we have a second to the nomination. Anyone else? I would like to respectfully decline. I've got so much else going. I mean, I'll do as much to help as I can, but I. You want to be more specific? I don't think your mics are really on because I'm having there trouble hearing you. I have no idea what this thing is. <laughs> um, Do you well, want to pull your name or stay? Yes, um, yes, I do. You do. Okay. Yes, so, Tom? I'd like to nominate Miss Miller. Miss Miller? <laughs> do I hear a second? Second. Okay, are there any other nominations? Okay, we'll do a roll call. All those for Miss Miller. Just say Miller. We'll start with uh, Mr. Kasky. Miller. Tom. Miller. Jim. Miller. Abstain. Okay. Lucky Miss Miller is now the vice chair. And I know she knows much more about this than I do. Okay, do I hear um, a motion to set the agenda? So move. So move. Are you second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, we don't have any public here. Cole, would you make the motion to set the agenda? Oh, yes, okay. really. So we'll go on to new business. And at this point, I will turn it over to Mr. T to see what this is all about. Well, obviously I'll be here to answer uh, a lot of questions um, uh, in your packet of information uh, in the memo there. there I've given you a, a brief, very brief background uh, an existing resolution and also the uh, current requirements. Um, I guess to elaborate on some of that, um, Blount County uh, is one of the 94, 95 uh, municipalities that had to apply to the state TDEC for a uh, permit for a stormwater program. It was a federal mandate that started at the at the, with the Clean Water Act at the EPA level, it was handed down to the states. Um, it, it basically, it's an unfunded mandate. It's a requirement. Uh, so Blount County, back in 2003, submitted an application that was required to TDEC, which is Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation, 
And with that permit, <clears throat> or that application, it was approved, therefore the county was issued a permit basically to regulate and implement uh, water quality measures uh, to improve the water quality of the county. Initially, um, that permit language covered the entire county outside of any municipality, so the unincorporated areas of the county. In that program, the county had to create a buffer. I'm just having trouble hearing. Had to implement uh, a water quality buffer program. The state, in their in the language of the permit, left it very vague. Left it up to the up to each city or county to make their own decision. And one being one reason being for that was what, for example, what might apply in Memphis where it's flat and you have sandy soils would not necessarily apply to Blunt, Sevier, Monroe County, and different places where you have a lot of clay and a lot of steep topography. So the state decided to let us implement a program that would best suit our topography, our soil types, our type of development uh, in this area. The uh, previous maybe two commissions then, uh, had a hard time deciding on what to do. They asked the state to come in and said, all right, state, give us some definition, give us more direction. And the state, to some extent, tried to do that, but said, Blount County, you're your own jurisdiction. You come up with what you feel adequate in your county to protect water quality through these um, vegetative buffers along streams. There was some pushing and shoving. Uh, the commission couldn't make the decision, so at that point in time, they created an ad hoc committee, just like we have tonight. Um, the, I had drafted a resolution looking at surrounding cities and counties in this area that had already been adopted to what, from my professional experience, or in, in, education and, and learning and going through all these meetings thought best suited Blount County. Um, the ad hoc committee uh, for the most part uh, disagreed with a large majority of the resolution that I had drafted. Uh, at the time we did not have thousands of dollars to hire a in, in engineering slash consulting company to draft a resolution for us. I started with a model ordinance that MTAS had created and drafted it from there. So the MTAS ordinance was kind of the backbone of what I started with. And looked at what Alcoa, Maryville, Knox County, or Sevier County had drafted and kind of compiled a resolution. The ad hoc committee um, went through that resolution word by word. And in that process, a lot of it was changed. And there were two issues that came up with the resolution. Number one, that process took nine months. So that put us beyond the required deadline of implementing or adopting, I should say, a water quality buffer program. Second of all, the county commission um, adopted, they finally whittled the original width zone uh, down to five feet. I had initially put down in, in the resolution 60, 60 foot wide buffer. That got cut in half to 30 feet and then after numerous more meetings it got cut down to five feet. It was approved of a five foot buffer. Uh, once the state realized this and came in and performed an audit of our program, they the state basically determined, and this is my own words, I don't have the language in front of me right now, basically said, all right, Blount County, you adopted the resolution beyond the deadline, which you were aware, you knew what the deadline was, and the commission knew that, and a five-foot water quality buffer is not sufficient. With that being said, the, uh, the state issued a director's order, which included a civil penalty of $10,000 assessed to Blount County. The, at that time, the uh, county mayor and uh, finan 
Assistant Director. Uh, I assume with the uh, discretion of some of the commissioners, uh, decided to appeal TDEC's uh, penalty. So we made a trip to Nashville, and in that meeting, in that discussion, in that appeal process, we got the $10,000 civil penalty reduced to $5,000 which was a big accomplishment. And also with that, we asked if that, instead of paying that money to the state, if we could use that money, somehow keep that money in house, in the county. And the state agreed to that. And what they let us do was to implement what they call a supplemental environmental project. And we elected to spend that $5,000 on the, um, constructed wetland education center behind um, Carpenter's Middle School off of Stedler, which is a really neat project. It's very educational and uh, hopefully all the county schools will, will someday be able to uh, use that property. And uh, there's educational signage, there's a walking path, it, it's done right. So anyway, we got to, to spend that $5,000 and keep it in the county, which is a good thing. Um, with that director's order, um, there were some stipulations. Uh, number one, obviously, that you know we could use the five thousand dollars in the county. Uh, however, my department could not take credit for that. One of our components of our stormwater program is to educate the public, which would have been a great thing to take credit for. However, I cannot take credit for the educational component um, because it was done through a single penalty process. Another uh, stipulation of the director's order was that when the state, if and when the state ever came out with new, new water quality buffer regulations that we would have to amend our existing resolution to meet the new state standards. Um, I know this is a lot of information, I'm just, a lot has happened from that point in time till now. So I'm just trying to give you a, a history lesson here. Um, the county's permit through the state for our stormwater program, it's a five year permit. That permit process was renewed in 2010. And uh, with that new permit, the state allowed us um, 48 months, more or less, to amend our regulations. And with that permit language, they have now given us set numbers across the state for the widths of the water quality buffer. Um, so that's that's basically where we were and where we are now. So we've got a deadline of May of this year to amend our existing resolution to meet the new state standards. And didn't I read that? 35 feet? It's, there's two numbers. There's okay. 60 feet and 30 feet, and it's in the packet, and I can oh. read that here. Um, but basically, it depends on the location of a project to determine how much drainage area <laughs> is at that particular site. Now, who determines that? Uh, who, who makes that decision? Well, it, it all would probably boil down to, uh, I could possibly do that during a map, using a mapping process, or program I have, or engineers, when they're designing and planning for a project, they can look at the, what they call the watershed or the drainage area to that specific site uh, and say, okay, in this location we have so many square miles draining to that property. Um, are they also factoring in the quality of the water that we're sending to it, how we're impacting it? At this point in time, no, not as far, not as, as, far as the existing water quality. Um, I mean, for instance, if it's a blue line. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, from that standpoint, yes, it has to, yeah, it has to be a, a blue line. Um, on the memo I've given you all, it's on the second page under definitions. And I didn't want to bore you all with 40 some of the pages of the state permit, so I just pulled out the, the two areas that discuss buffers. 
Um, but if it's less than one square mile of drainage area, then the buffer width can be 30 feet. If it's one square mile or larger, it's the only one there. it has to be 60 feet. You're only talking about inside the urbanized area, right? Has it changed from 2010? No, it has not. No, uh, they do this whenever they do the census every 10 years. Right. So, and let me give a little little history lesson on that. The initial permit that was approved by the state, the application process, which was done before my time at the county, was submitted to the state. Said, "All right, state, we are going to implement this requirement of a water quality or stormwater program in Blount County, and that program." Will be implemented countywide, outside of any, uh, outside of all the unincorporated areas of the county. During another resolution that I had to amend, which deals with construction projects, the county commission, during a long, drawn-out debate and argument, realized that Blount County had gone above and beyond. Uh, the minimum requirements as far as implementing stormwater program in the county. The state requirement for implementation for stormwater programs, if it's a city, it has to encompass the entire jurisdictional boundary of the city. If it's a county, the county can has they have two options. They can elect to implement the program countywide, which is what we initially did, or we can only or we can reduce that area to just the urbanized area. So when the county commission, the previous commission, realized that we had gone above and beyond the minimum requirements, they decided to pull that back and just do the minimum, meet the minimum requirements, which is just the urbanized area. That's why you have the map in your in your files there to let you to just to show you where the existing urbanized area is and where this rate resolution is implemented. Anything outside of the, the urbanized area, this resolution does not apply at this point in time unless this committee and this commission feels led to believe to enlarge that back out to the full county. If but we, the farming is exempt. Correct. Agriculture is exempt and from pretty much several exemptions to Yes. Yes. If we keep just the urbanized area who regulates, so each municipality, each city will, has their own rules? The city of Alcoa and the city of Maryville have a stormwater program just like mine, and we work very closely okay. together. We try to implement kind of the same language in all of our different resolutions to make things easier countywide and this for the cities as far as what's being done and by who or where. They kind of see the same language. Uh, the city of Alcoa and the city of Maryville will, they are implementing these, this resolution or these uh, okay. guidelines as well. As far, however, this does not apply to Townsend, Rockford, Louisville, or Friendsville, or the Seymour area for even that aspect. Those areas don't fall under the state requirements for a stormwater program. So this only applies in Alcoa and Maryville and then the urbanized area. So if there is a project located outside, just across the street, for example, where the urbanized area is, these regulations would not apply. Across the street it would if, if it falls within inside the urbanized area. And the, obviously the next census, if this urbanized area increases or changes one way or another, then these regulations would, as written now, would apply to the current urbanized area. So is there a chance, uh Okay, there's some confusion about the urbanized area on this map, and then when you look at the um, what we call the urban growth boundary. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Which and, is and which? The, what are we doing here? That that's confusing. Um, let me let me back up and try. I don't, I don't know if I brought the language with me, but the urbanized area is done by the census. And it's totally all by the census. U.S. Census Bureau, and it's all it's all done by population density. The if you want to call it the epicenter of the urbanized area is actually the city of Knoxville. So 
out, Blount County's urbanized area, it stems out from the city of Knoxville and gets the more densely populated areas in the county. Um, if, you know, pr pretty much all of Knox County is going to be an urbanized area uh, because of the population density. Most of Sevier County probably will because of their population. Uh, you get in the outskirts, maybe going towards Anderson County, you're going to have a smaller urbanized area because it's less densely populated. Outside, follow, like I said, the epicenter more or less is the city of Knoxville. Um, it just so happens that the urbanized area is a very similar boundary to what we've referenced the urban growth boundary. The urban growth boundaries are the areas with in Blount County to which Alcoa, the city of Alcoa and the city of Maryville have the right through TCA to enforce, if you want to so call it, or at least to be involved in a planning process for subdivision of land. So in the urban growth boundary around the Alcoa and Maryville, we have the urban growth boundary. So if there is a development well, I'm sorry, if there's a subdivision of land, even though it's in the county, if it falls in this urban growth boundary, then whichever jurisdiction would, is closest to that subdivision of land, whether Alco or Maryville, they would have the process to go through the, through the approval of that subdivision of land. And for the most part, the boundary for the urban growth boundary is very similar to the urbanized area. Some places it overlaps one or the other, other places it's right on line, um, but it's, <clears throat> it's two different worlds, but it's pretty similar, yeah. if that's not confusing enough. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so is there another map available that shows more I, precisely what we're talking about? Uh, as far as the urbanized area? Mm -hmm. or, well, I mean, I, I printed that map off myself. I can zoom in and show the areas closer, but it, it, it will, I just try to do it to where you can see the entire county and see where this area applies countywide. Obviously, any city boundary within this urbanized area, this doesn't apply to because they have their own regulations. Right. So it's any urbanized area outside of the city limit is where this existing resolution will apply. Okay, I'm gonna show my ignorance. Is the census taken every year? No, it's four years. years. Huh? It's four years, isn't it? Every four years? Census every ten years. Ten years? Every ten. Oh, okay. I'm wrong too. <laughs> so. Well, you know, yeah. Obama took over that. That's in his office now. Well, if, if it changes, if they go to every year, then this map obviously could change every year. Now, the thing is, the, the 2010 census was completed. I don't think this map here you have before before you here was available maybe a year and a half after the census. That's not one of their main goals is to create maps necessarily, mm -hmm. especially yeah. urbanized areas and small scale after census. So um, whether the census, the time frame of the census has changed from the federal government, whatever they say, and whenever this map changes, this will apply. Unless the commission decides to go back, just have it county wide, and then you don't have to worry about urbanized area and how it changes. So you, there's two options there. But uh, right now, if the urbanized area changes, then this resolution will will mimic that change out in the field. Justin, what are we looking at specifically? Are we looking at the standards or the variances, or both? As far as the state's concerned, with the new regulations. Uh, the standards, the actual So the standards width. is what we have to change because it still, it still says five feet. Right. Exactly. And That's I, and what has to be changed. Correct. The variance is, I actually looked at this today. Mm -hmm. The variance is pretty much mirror what, what this says, 60 mm -hmm. feet and 30 feet. Yeah. You're correct. And obviously during the process, the ad hoc committee before, that didn't get changed for whatever reason. Obviously, you, you can't have a five foot buffer with a variance of 30 foot, 60 That's foot. That's what I was wondering. During the process, 
like I said, there were a lot of debates, a lot of arguments. It got very heated, a lot of confusion as well. We had uh, probably as many people out in the audience speaking their mind, alter and, and, and you know, being a, being a role in, in the change in the resolution along with the uh, ad hoc committee members. So, so let me ask a question because based on my understanding, if we change the five foot buffer to the thirty and the sixty term language and keep the urbanized boundary. Mm -hmm. This resolution would meet the state's requirement. As far as I know, yes. Now, obviously, I, I hesitate on saying yes. It should. As far as you know. <laughs> you know how the state is, and the people that have done the previous audits of, uh, of my program, the county stormwater program, are no longer employed or have a different role. So a new auditor comes in. I don't know when they're going to show up next. Um, they should be doing it every year to three years. The next person that comes in and performs an audit can read through this and say, hey, this this isn't right. You need to change that. Even though it has nothing to do, we could have the 30 and 60 in there. It could right. be something, section four, for right. all I know. You know different, totally different section. They may see an issue where the previous uh, state auditor did not find an issue. Mm -hmm. I don't know how thoroughly they'll go through it. My guess is they're going to go through it because they know we were delinquent the first time and they'll want to look at it closer okay. this time. Uh, but as far as all I know, will be the 30 and 60. I know obviously um, we need to look at the variant section to make sure those two correlate. I was going to ask you if you change the, the standards that match the variances, what, there's not a lot of room there for a variance. Uh, may not you be. change it to 30, to 30 and 60 because that's what it's saying anyway. Yeah. And like I said, the. Uh, the previous ad hoc committee and commission, a lot of the changes are there. Um, the variance section is probably pretty much left as I had it when I initially wrote it because I started with 64. Is what I initially presented to the county commission. Um, and in your packet, I believe that I highlighted two sections, one of which was the section nine, the variance, variance section, and the section that actually had the buffer widths, which was uh, three. Section three, I would highly recommend this body to definitely go through those two sections, probably word for word, to make sure we don't have any issues or conflicts between those two sections. Um, any other section we could go through, we could change if this body feels led to. Now, I will say the last time we went through this resolution, <clears throat> we actually went through this word for word. Um, Rhonda. I'm sure her fingers were about to fall off. She was writing so much down, there was so much confusion because we would, like I said, it, this went on for nine months. Um, wow. We were literally went through word by word and made changes daily, or, or each meeting, and then somebody would go through and read something they didn't like it, and the next meeting we would go back and change it, and then we go to, we get closer to the end of the document, and realize hey this impacts, we got to go back to the previous section or section before that because this has language those two don't correlate a lot of confusion and i wouldn't be surprised if there's maybe some more issues that were in there uh, well the my concern would be the variances were modeled after other counties but that was before the state come back and said it will be a 30 or a 60 foot buffer correct so i'm thinking in my mind that now the the average buffer may not apply if they're dictating it must be 30 or 60. Do you know if, if their the standard would you think you could get by with the standard or not based on your understanding? I guess I'm, I'm not sure if I understand exactly. Well what I'm saying is the width of the average buffer within the boundaries to be developed so it will not be less than Here it acts like you may have a really wide buffer in other places, you could be less than the 60 oh, yeah. because you're adding that up. But since this timing, the, the state has come back and mandated 30 or 60 foot. So I'm wondering if the average, if this would still apply, or is it pretty black and white now? Well, in, in the state <laughs> language, uh, for example, the 60 foot criterion of the width of the buffer zone can be established on an average width basis at, as you know, at a project. So, 
there's understandings where, for example, you, you've got, uh, say, a sanitary sewer going in or a water main. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's only so many places you can put those in a project. A lot of times it's going to be the lowest ground. They want gravity flow, which just like a stream, it's going, it's going to be near stream. Right. So if there has to be some disturbance in that, with, let's say, 60-foot buffer for that utility, it's got to go there. And you can't alter too far from that. Or, for example, if there is a, uh, a hindrance to where a road goes due to, uh, say, a sinkhole or some type of topography issue, a rock outcrop that is impossible based on blast to put a road in. We have to kind of shift the road over a little bit. It can encroach within that buffer zone. As long as we have a 60 foot average, you know, if, it, if we have to encroach 10 feet here, we might have to get an additional 10 feet somewhere else. So it's on an average basis. But do you think that's okay based on your understanding of the current? Yes, it says it right there. And this is straight out of the state rates. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. Okay. I have a question. To, okay, to make this the rule, the 30 to 60, there's a lot of places right now that, that that's not what is there. What happens? They're grandfathered, right? They are grandfathered in? This resolution would only apply to, and it, I think it, it, it should reference that in here somewhere, would only apply to new development or redevelopment projects yeah, I read that. Uh, that would disturb one acre or more ground. <clears throat> okay. Let me, go ahead. What if this was, this land has been approved, this is in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. it has been approved, but no one has actually bought it or developed it yet? What do you mean by approved? They like, like what what stage in the process of approval? This little strip of land has been a said that they can have a three bedroom house on this land. How big is the lot? It's probably just barely over over an acre. But oh. there's a stream on it. Okay, and then that's fine. So I'm I I don't yeah. own it or anything. Exactly. I just, yeah. Given that as an example, that My it's guess been okayed, but it hasn't no, happened. No construction has begun. Right. But what you're describing, more than likely, that piece of property would be exempt. Okay. Whether the whether the property property is or the lot itself is an acre, point, one point one acres, or if it's a thousand acres, if they disturb less than one acre on that tract of land, oh, if they disturb apply. less than one acre. Exactly. And let me let me. Whoa. Try to muddy the waters okay. even more. Less than one acre. What happened when the county, again, before my time, the regulations said countywide, we had to implement uh, construction requirements for, for new developments or, or land disturbing activities, I should, should call it. That was countywide, and it was a tenth of an acre or more required a great grading permit that I have to issue. So that was basically done to get a lot of the home construction under a permit process so we could go out and inspect and enforce if need be and give direction on erosion control measures basically, okay? When the commission realized that we were countywide and didn't, did not have to be, we could stay with an urbanized area, they said, all right, what else is going above and beyond the state minimum requirements? Well, the state requires, only requires permitting, inspection, water quality, buffer regulations, only with an urbanized area, which we just discussed, and only for projects that disturb one acre or more. So initially, it was going to apply to smaller projects, but the county commission said, no, we're going to take it from countywide down the urbanized area, and from a tenth of an acre up to an acre of disturbance. So, there again, if it's an urbanized area and if it, the development only disturbs an acre or more of land, then this would apply. Agriculture is exempt. Civil culture, timber harvesting, logging is exempt. If it's a new development or redevelopment that disturbs one acre of land or more within the urbanized area, 
this regulation would apply. Now, I know there's some gray areas and there's some this and that. <clears throat> some of those just got to take case by case basis. Has to be has to be a drainage area of more than one square mile too. Are those areas identified, or would they be identified? They would, they're not identified right now. We'd they have would to, be. Yeah. Well, obviously we would, we would at some point in time either. I would what I would prefer is the engine an engineer to determine right. okay what's the drainage area. I mean, right. he's already looking at runoff and how to control runoff on the site, then he ought to be able to figure out the drainage area. I would try to go back on my own sake of it and confirm that. Okay, is he correct or not? Keep in mind... <clears throat> when you look, say one square... I read that, too. But one square mile of runoff. If you got a creek, does the length of that creek and the width of it whatever got to eventually end up to one square mile or are we saying a creek that's longer than one mile well the, it's a, it, it, the area of that creek it uh, before i answer your question uh, i don't want to i don't want to word this wrong um okay. buffer widths depend on the size of drainage area um so the, the drainage area is not necessarily just the length of the creek. It's the watershed, the overall oh, landscape. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand. Um, so you, got, you got to look into it. Yeah. yeah. So what all, any land exactly. What all can. feeds that site or that section of the stream? What feeds that area as far as runoff? It could be several tributaries draining right to one creek and then a larger creek. And I, I guess to, if you look at your map, all, all these areas are closer, obviously, towards the city, which is closer to the Little River, and lower end of the Little River, and also closer to Fort Loudon Lake. So with that being said, most of these areas... Or TWAs. No, go ahead. You're gonna have larger streams as you get closer to Pistol Creek and, and towards Little River and towards the lake, which is where the urbanized area is. You're going to have a larger drainage area on these larger streams than if you have a little small headwater stream, is what we call it, that's a foot wide at the base of Chihuahua Mount. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So more than likely, just from what I've kind of seen as far as the drainage patterns and, and watersheds and size of streams, I'm thinking for the most part, a 60 foot buffer is gonna be the majority of what applies in the urbanized area. Just because the location and the amount of runoff and drainage areas that feed these streams where the urbanized area is. You got Pistol Creek, Cricket Creek, Nine Mile Nails, these are all large streams, which is where a lot of the urbanized area. Now there are some, obviously small streams in here, um, but you take this little small stream out towards Ellajoy or you know six mile area you know uh, you may not have a square mile drainage area but you closer you get to town you're gonna have more drainage area obviously because everything kind of drains to one area for the most part does that make sense yep are these minimums is this state saying these are minimum buffer zones yes yes we we could go above and beyond no, I'm not saying I'm, they're, they're, I'm not saying no, I'm just saying this is minimum. Can't yeah. go above, right. can't go below. Exactly. Where does TWA come in on this with their rules? What is TWA? I mean not TWA, TBA. Uh, this has nothing to do with TBA yeah. though. Yes. This is so all nothing to do with the Little River. Well, they they regulate um, navigable navigable waters. Well, in the so past, get, they have regulated some streams, too. Well, I guess it depends. If the stream runs directly into well, the yeah, river. Yeah, and, and I don't want to speak for TVA. They could have jurisdiction over that stream. Yes. But this does not apply to the stream. This applies to the land outside the stream. It's the stream bank and the surrounding area. So I, I don't want to make a motion yet. I want to give my opinion. My opinion yeah. is that we should change the five foot buffer to the 30 and the 60 to match the state regulation and then go back through and confirm the wording matches that is my recommendation. And I, 
Personally, I'd like to keep it just in the urbanized area. I totally agree with you. I don't like the state telling us what we have to do. And, and I'm just a messenger. This I is, know this you are. I'm just saying, I'm just getting my opinion out there. Does anybody else so want to express theirs? Basically, what I just said, though, meets the state's minimum requirement. You're right, right. And, and until they do another audit, right. they, they may they see may something different. It, but but the, right. Yes, the main thing is the widths, from five feet to 30 or 60. Um, so there, there might need to be some other changes. Um, the only other thing I've heard, and we can say this for another meeting, is a, a surveyor brought up to me about something on the, uh, would probably fall within section, Sure, now it's basically deals with the platting process. It had nothing to do with actual buffer widths. Uh, it'd be section eight. And I ran off and left that information. But that we don't have to do that. He recommended as a surveyor to make the process more streamlined and more efficient, I guess, and, and maybe even cheaper on developers. So that's something we might want to look at. And I can get his the language he kind of gave me on, on what he recommended. So does that have to go through your department when they subdivide? You said plants. Yes. Well, it, it, if it's an urban growth boundary, it would go to the, out, the city of Alcoa or the city of Maryland. And there's been several of those that the, the plant went through Maryville's planning process. However, it was in the urbanized area and the existing five foot water quality buffer did apply. If it's outside the urban growth boundary, then it would go to Blount County's, our planning commission, our planning process, and I would obviously see that plat, and if there was an acre more disturbance, they would have to get a grading permit, and then the water quality buffer would, would apply at that point in time. Justin, is a stream crossing, what are they talking about when they say it's except that a stream crossing? Is that a highway? Mm, well, it could be. I'm not sure where. <laughs> Where it was but in, in section nine, it, it mentioned stream crossing a couple of times. Typically, that would generally mean it, any type of a crossing, whether it be a uh, driveway, private drive, Anything a crossing. county road, or a utility crossing. Okay. That's that's the gist of it. Typically. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and obviously, there's you know. For example, I'll, I'll use a water main or a sewer main. You know, they could basically have to go one direction. And if that sewer line has to cross the creek perpendicular, obviously it's going to, there's going to be some encroachment and, yeah. and you know, it's going to be right in the middle of that buffer. We, we can't prevent that from happening. So there's going to, that's where the averaging or variances or exceptions come, come into play. So normally you'd be talking about utility. Utilities or roads. Yes. yes. I would like to know Karen's and Jeff's opinions of going along with what Tom said. How do you feel, Jeff? I would like to look at it and study it just a little bit more before. I understand they're saying the 30 and the 60 and well we have to do that but uh, we do have a tour. oh it scared me I think your mic's on <laughs> um, and a, and absolutely not take it you know countywide state in the urbanized area um, just do you think there's any other as part of the current resolution, is there anything that's in there that you know of that's really above and beyond or what you would consider the minimum? No, that's a hard question. I, I would have to read through it again with a fine tooth comb and really take my time. Nothing that I can recall. Um, like I said, they got whittled down pretty pretty bad the first yeah, time. Kind of what um, I'm sure imagine. there's still things in here that people will disagree with and don't like and you know we can look at changing that um, but 
to answer your question, not that I can think of right now. Um, but and I guess that was my point. I just like, I mean, if we take another 30 days before we meet again, we're still within time of. Yeah, I, and I'm not going to tell this body what to do at all. I'm here to help out and answer yeah. questions and, and, and do what I can. Um, I think back in 08 when we went through this, I think we're meeting about every two weeks. But we were, it was very heated and debated, and we were trying to hurry and get um, yeah. You mean an it was heated and debated on this, on this group? This group and the full commission. <laughs> Well, I can imagine the public. I mean, if I owned, okay, somebody already owns the land, and they want to put an acre and a half garden in. Exempt. They're exempt. Agriculture. They're just doing it for themselves, though. Doesn't matter. Oh, okay. And uh, that was a big problem last time. People keep bringing up property rights and <laughs> agriculture and all right, that. Right. Right. It, it, and I, I, I can't tell you how many times I said agriculture is exempt. I said it until I was blue in the face, and it still came up every single meeting. Well, what about, okay, I live on the Little River. So, if you're on the Little River. Are you in the urbanized zone? No. I can't tell. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm in the Alcoa group. Well, no, I'm right there. Okay, I'm not in the urbanized. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't. Well, I guess that would be in Maribel. People living on the Little River, mostly. I mean, some of them have I guess huge the boat docks on the Little River that go on into the land. I, I just. But again, it's, a boat dock is not more than one acre. Of disturbance. Oh, that's true. That's true. And there's would, other regulations that have to do with the river. My understanding of am I, am I correct? Yes, it, yes. The state regulates. And, and TVA, when it comes to the other lower. Well, I just know that TVA, one of my neighbors, there's a creek behind my house, and one of our neighbors made a dam and filled it up, let it fill up. It was still coming out, but he had a little pond there, and TVA came and made it. I mean, the stream was that big, mm -hmm. made him take it down because it was feeding into the Little River. Yeah, you—that's a state standard. It has nothing to do with. Uh, it's not TVA. Well, TVA can do that as well, depending on where it is and who wants to take the lead on that. But you can't impede a water body and dam it up like that. Okay. At least without prior approval. I mean, the Army Corps engineer might get involved, TDEC, TVA, uh -huh. all the big dogs come out for that. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a no um, I get excited. Now, as far as what this committee wants to do, we've got, just keep in mind, we've got a deadline of March to present this back to the full commission. Or the full commission will have to make, make the decision at that point in time. The deadline for this to be ad actually adopted whatever this is, whatever it turns out to be, mm -hmm. is May of this year. Right. Um, of this piece right here. Yes. We met about every two weeks when we did this back in 2008. This committee may not want to meet that often. Whatever this committee wants to do, you know, it's fine. Um, Justin, would it be too much to ask? Um, you know, you're, you're kind of the expert, but as you read through this again, if you read something that might be a hot button item, mm -hmm. could you flag that and mm -hmm. notify this committee so that maybe even be by email or something so that we don't have to wait till the next meeting to start mm -hmm. considering that? Mm -hmm. uh, and what my initial plan was to, was to go ahead and completely revise the resolution to meet the state standards. Okay. That's what my initial plan was months ago. I like that. <laughs> well, the thing, the reason I didn't, and I can, I can do that now from the direction of you all, but I've had to create numerous resolutions to present to the commission for approval to meet the state requirements for our stormwater program. There again, we don't have the money to go pay twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars for a consulting company to write it for us, like a, a forcing a lot of surrounding places can do that. 
So I've had to pull and copy and paste and steal and all these different things and, and, and borrow and whatever I can do to create what I feel is best for Blunt County and get as much input as I can from the county attorney, the mayor, um, you know, those, those type of directions. Almost every time I've been criticized on what I put on paper because it came from me and only me. And I, I got shot at a lot. I'm just being honest with you. Um, I took a lot of heat because people, especially this last time, they felt I was trying to enforce regulations that weren't required and had my own agenda um, and was really pushing the envelope, which is not what I was doing at all. I was just basically copied what other cities and counties had done and pulled out what I thought would best apply. Um, but I took a lot of criticism for doing that. So that's one reason. That's the only reason I didn't go ahead and rewrite everything now. I wanted this committee to do it, and I'll aid you all. I didn't want to go ahead and do it myself without you all, your all's direction because I just took too much heat. Last 11 years, I can't tell you how many times I've been beat up over that. So. Is this all that needs to be changed to be in compliance? This is it. Now that's in the whole two, resolution. Those two sections right there, uh, two and three. those two sections in the memo are the if you pull up this new the state permit, I thought you, I couldn't get on. It wouldn't it said they were the um, site had something. They moved. No, well, they it had they had re, re did the site something anyway, and it had a list of all the other stuff. But apparently, huh. apparently the link they had it didn't. Well, that's just happened in the last two or three weeks because I went on there and pulled right up. And, Anyway, if you pull up the permit, and I, I can send you another one for trial link again or whatever, but if you go in that state permit, which you all don't have in front of me, so that I gave, gave you a link, if you go in that state permit and pull it up and type in an owner, like if you do a find and search section, type in buffer, these are the only two sections that buffer comes up, that word buffer comes up. So, yeah, there again, if, if, if all we implement is this for my Professional opinion from what I've learned and heard from TDEC, then we should be okay. Now, what are you talking about? As far as these two, these two sections right here, section uh, 4.251 and section 7 in the memo, in the state permit that tells Blount County what to do as far as our program, that's the only places buffers are mentioned. And that's all we have to do is change the buffers? The widths, from the 5 widths. feet to 30 and 60. I don't want to say it's that simple, but almost it is. But like you know, it. we could. Like I said, previous ad hoc committee went through every every page word by word. Yeah, I'd love to read it. And I'm not saying we have to do that, or we should. I'm just saying that's what they did last time. I think mean, it's one reason the variance section got left before because there's so much discussion and confusion. Um, it's very difficult for Ron and I to figure out who was doing what and what changed and what did. Uh, uh -huh. But. Well, I think it was the more simple, the better. Uh, if that is possible in government. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would prefer, recommend, uh, request, ask, whatever you want to call it, you all to, to go through the resolution. I know it's not something you really want to do. It's 13, 14 pages. Um, there's things that you all may see that need to be changed. Um, there could be typos that myself and the previous ad hoc committee and the Rhonda and the commission may have missed that need to be changed. You know, you know we're, we're all human when we make mistakes, but I don't care to go there and change whatever you all like, but I would ask if you've got time, like Mr. Hedrick said, take some time to look over it. I could start tomorrow and go ahead and change those two sections to try mimic each other and to come up with the 30 foot, 60 foot language in there. And, and then get that back to you all and review it and all that before the next meeting, whenever we, you all decide that, that is. Um, I but I, like, like I said, I, I don't know of any other changes that need to be done except for those two. Um, but To me, that, that sounds like a good strategy. Yes. So do we need to make a motion so that it's formal with what we're doing or what? I'd like to hear Karen's first. Sure. She was coming to those meetings. Were you? Yes, so I was involved talking. with that. I was one of the people in the audience, that, and we did uh, 
it was I'm so grateful that we had those Sorry. meetings and uh, Justin did a good job thank you and he was there for us to answer questions uh, and I was pleased the way it turned out that people the public was there because it was so very important these buffer zones and all this uh, that we're dealing with is very very important to all the citizens and I think it's something that really has to be studied deeply and everybody needs to be a full understanding of each and every word and what is meant by these words and what is intended for the well-being of all the citizens and it's nothing just to be taken lightly and uh, I don't want to see us get penalties or anything like that uh, for not uh, abiding by the rules and regulations that have been set before us by the state or but I just believe that we need to really study it like Mr. Mm -hmm. Hedrick said and I think I think we're all in agreement to that yeah. and we just can't just stamp and say oh yeah this looks fine and go with it because I, I think it's just something that we uh, we have I'm grateful to have this ad hoc committee and I'm grateful that uh, we're here in this room uh, last time we were in a very small room and this way, if uh, the citizens want to watch these meetings, they're able to, and they can give us input, too. Mm -hmm. So I think that is great. And I hope we can continue meeting in this room. I didn't ask, are we being taped? I do. I hope it's <laughs> I'm not conducting this in strict order. I wanted to get everybody's feelings about this. Keep, keep in mind the, the resolution that created this committee, the ad hoc committee, the deadline to submit back to the full commission is March, whatever I said, the 19th, whatever that date is, the, the March meeting. So um, we've got some time, uh, but it, not a whole lot of time. Um, right. I don't have a calendar in front of me. Okay. Um, do, I hear a mo do I hear a motion on how? We should proceed with this. I think Tom was getting ready to make a motion and I interrupted. Sorry. Well, I think just I'm thinking we're going to have to have probably four meetings, but I don't want to volunteer that because I'm the one that won't be the next one or two if <laughs> we do. But I think it's going to take probably three to four meetings. To oh, I think so too. But I think so. If you look at when the, the due date is, and look at a calendar. It's it's got to be more than once every two weeks. I think to get it done. I don't have a calendar in front of me. Okay, but it seems like most of us. I don't know what do you think? We're leaning toward keeping it in the urbanized area and. Get the other issue. I don't know what's best. So we have to march the third to come up with something. Okay, we're looking at February. You only got four weeks. And actually, the, <clears throat> I guess it, <clears throat> as far as the March meeting, it would have whatever the deadline is to get on the March agenda committee meeting because it has to go there before it goes to the full commission. Which is I, the I third. assume, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, That's so great. whatever, we can't bypass the agenda committee and just throw it on the full commission that, that Thursday. So whatever that agenda committee meeting date is, I guess it's actually a deadline. You can do it, but they'll get mad. Sorry, what? You can do it, but they'll get mad about it. Yeah. I mean, you can have something placed on the agenda at the meeting, but they won't like it. And they may not allow it, so. Um. Since no public showed up here, do we have to do the public thing again? Yes, ma'am. Yes, and that would be at the agenda meeting, probably? Well, mm -hmm. what? I think, would we, do we need to announce all of the meetings to the public? I, yes. yes, I think yes. that's correct. Yes. That's that requires correct procedure. how many yes. days? Yeah, five Karen, days. help me, I can't that's hear. That's correct procedure. It you has have to, to be able to five day notice. Right, but so. at which point? Well, for if, every you if you schedule a meeting for for February the sixth, you have to give notice by February second. If you have a meeting by February sixth, you have to have five days. You have to have five prior days to prior to the meeting to have notice. Oh, you're talking about the February agenda meeting? No, 
No, what are we talking about? Well, we need more meetings. This oh, committee. yeah, yeah. I was kind of so going for, from the back end. For each of these committee meetings. Oh, yeah, so we definitely need more. If we're going to have one per week, we just need to make sure it's at least five days from tonight so that we can give proper notice, or really six, because Ron has got to give that notice. Mm -hmm. So five days from tonight? Is that what you're saying? S at least six days from tomorrow. If that's when you want to have the next meeting. So that when the public can be notified. We need to decide how frequently you want to meet okay. and just set the date. I'm sorry. That's all right. You, you speak so softly, oh. Tom. I, I really, it's not <laughs> on. Talk. I don't know what this is. Hey, this one's on. Okay. Okay. I'm looking. I think we should go ahead and schedule one. And let's throw out a date, and I don't have my whole calendar here. I would suggest February 2nd. February 2nd is a Monday. Yes. If you could, if you tell Rob, one, two, three, no, that one, yeah, I've got the day. calendar on my telephone. Does anybody else have I've the meeting right calendar? Here. On your telephone? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can. Even my glasses, I still can't see. You can't see and I can't hear. Well, I can't see that either. Aha, uh -huh, here it is. Even my glasses. There's nothing scheduled for February the 1st. But I will be out of town. Karen. This Sunday. February 1st is Sunday. Sunday, February 2nd. February 2nd is a Monday, Groundhog Day. Yeah. Did I say February 2nd? February 2nd? You said the 1st. Oh. I'm sorry. I meant 2nd. Okay. Is February 2nd, everybody look at your calendars. I will be headed toward the beach. I'm sorry. That is, a, is the budget committee meet that day? There's nothing on the calendar. Okay. okay. Yes, they will. Now, we, no. I guess even if there's another meeting, we can still meet. There's as nothing as scheduled. As long as they're not in here or if we have to go to a different yeah. room. But um, even though there's other I don't think committees, unless any of those, if you can these members here are your eyes are better than mine. Yeah. There's the whole calendar right there. The budget mm -hmm. won't be until the 9th because they usually meet the day before the agenda. Budget's the 9th. committee's the 10th. And then so they won't meet until the 9th. Well, Agen we agenda's 10th. Two, yep. yes. two people missing. Who's the second one missing? Tom. Tom. What? What are those dates? On the second? I'll be in the hospital, but go ahead. Oh, that's the right. committee is the 10th. Yes. So the budget committee will be the 9th, so the budget committee is not meeting on February 2nd. No. No, uh, nothing's on February 2nd. That's correct. So, I mean, is that a good day know. for everyone? Yeah, except I, for you. I got except for me. I don't except you and Tom. Let me check. Hold on. Okay, that would give us one, two, three. One, two, three. And Justin. You're not here. It, I, I can't say for sure. No. It's oh. according if I get out on a flight. It would back. just be, it would be, yes. <coughs> okay. You gotta have at least three to have a quorum. You gotta have three? You got five. You got five members. Okay. Jeff, are you going out of town too? I, I am. I'm, and that flight I get back in from Texas is. You don't know. It, it may get out at 10.58 and it may not. Right. Okay, so that day is not going to work. I, I, I'd hate to sit here and tell you for sure when I really don't know. Just oh. from past experience. Okay. Any other day that the only, because um, we got to count time out, the 4th, 5th, 6th, Of course, you'll be in school in the daytime. What about at night? No, I'm fine at night. We have third is out, and I can't do it third. I'm sorry. Can't, can't do it the third. Obviously, we, you know, we have No, I know. I said fourth, fifth, or sixth. Either one of those is fine with me. How about you? Fourth, fifth, sixth. It's fine with me. Sure, on the on Wednesday night. That meeting the third though is at noon. We're talking about the fourth, fifth, and sixth. Oh.
We're talking, okay, Tuesday night is open to. No, the HR Insurance Committee meets Tuesday night. They're, they're, the third is a rescheduled meeting. Yes, it's a rescheduled yeah. meeting. Five o'clock. Five o'clock, they meet here. Okay. Well, the thing you gotta look at as well is I mean, when will you how many days are we given before the 10th? Why are we what worrying are we? about the 10th? Well, if we were going to try to meet and do the public hearing and send something on. Oh, we're, we're not going to do no. it until the March. Oh, uh, we're not going to yeah. send something to March. I'm with you. March. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, Grady, I already said, I already forgot what you said. He said fourth, fifth, or sixth. Either one of those. Dumb. Any one those of those. Any problem with anybody, it's stuff I'll be gone. I don't know about Friday afternoon being a, yeah, okay. the best time. Let's Saturday say the fourth or fifth. Fourth. fourth or fifth, Wednesday or Thursday at five. Thursday. Now I have I, I, no question. Yeah. As far as the the, the public notice that Rhonda has to get mm -hmm. the newspaper, is it five days or five business days? How what's it's five days? It's five days period. My understanding is five calendar days. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's what I thought I was going to make sure. Okay. But we don't need the public here for that meeting. Are they have to be at every meeting? Yes. To there has to be a public notice in the paper about the meeting. And from what I understand, we also have to have um, every meeting. state law. Yes. 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 Because there's more than two of you. Law. <laughs> because and what? There's more than two commissioners here. Yep. Or two or more. Sunshine law. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And we have to have a section for public input oh, items right. on the agenda and not on the agenda. <laughs> yep. Even though there may not be over here. It has to be on the agenda from That's what right. Okay. Well, today is what? Well, you, you're fine on the fourth or fifth. I'm yeah, fine on any of them. And we got and let's put in a notice for Ron as well. Okay. How about the Wednesday night at five? Can you be here? Grady be here and Karen? It'll just yes. be the three of you. Mm -hmm. And Justin. Well, I, I can't vote though. Justin. Oh, no. Okay. We're meeting on Wednesday night, the 4th, 5 o'clock, in this room. In the meantime, in the meantime, we need to be studying this and we need Justin's email address. It's on the memo. It's on, it's on the memo sheet. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. His phone number. Yeah, the last page. Mm -hmm. Oh, this must be over here. That's me. Oh, yeah, you need that back? What, what, what are you taking from me? <laughs> Can we have any more confusion? <laughs> okay. I would suggest that you um, email Justin back and forth with any concerns that you have and be specific about where it is on the, what are we calling this? The resolution? The resolution. But you also said we only need, need to be concerned with those two se sections. Seven and eight. Those two sections are the only ones that, that reference a width, uh, actual number in the resolution, but there may be other sections that this committee will, would like to amend as well. Okay. That's why I asked about So the whole document. Trying to, take, trying to read through it. Um, Can you put the, us on a, on a list so that we know what's going back and forth? I'm not sure if I was On an email it. list, like <coughs> you can send, if somebody sends you. No, you can't because of the sunshine law. 
Oh. He, can, he can post it on the commission forum or he can talk individually. Well, you can. He can do it. He can do it, but. Because well, he can't uh, vote. We just can't email yeah. each other. And okay. can we and can we ver not to back up? Can we verify in the morning with with Rhonda or I'm not sure about those days as far as the five days. Is it five? It's five. It's, it's just five days. Period. Yes, Thank for you. the agenda. I don't remember. I had to check that. It's five. It's five for the agenda. Okay. Five. For and for the public notice. Yes. Question about that, and I don't know what the answer. Is. Well, I'm pretty sure if. Our meeting date don't work, Rondo. Right well, that's what I'm saying. Could could we make sure in the morning that we're okay. we're right? That, I don't know. I'm not sure that that'll work with the with, with the paper as far as notifying the public notice. I'm not. I, well, well, let's set it. Let's Before we get it. too far along, but I agree with you. Trying to get something oh, down. So. Right. She could tell us in the morning for wrong. I could contact everyone. If, if Rhonda says we're wrong <laughs> or, or is that what who is this nice you're like oh are you Hi. I'm Mary Gentry I'm Mary Gentry I'm one of the retired Black County Schools and Black County Government I've worked for Department for Government Department for Schools retired after 32 years and I've worked for Rhonda for 10 years now. oh okay. I'm on the Soil Conservation Board and I'm an great a real farm girl yes yeah <laughs> so is it are you contacting Rhonda or am I? Yes, I'm good. Okay. Okay. We didn't put that in a form of motion. Do we have to do that? No. Ms. Cole. We need to make a motion to adjourn, but I just, uh, you can make a motion if you choose about the uh, next meeting. Okay. She knows everything. You wanted to say something first. I was going to ask Mr. Cole, when, when, when you expect to be out of, out of commission to where, as far as communication was. Yeah. There, and well, the reason I was asking um, if this body wants me to go ahead and try to at least revise the two sections that I've highlighted and that I know need to be changed. Yes. I was gonna try to maybe get that to you before before you go to the hospital or whatever. Okay. You're, you're, um, that way you'll have it and that way if you get it, if you want to and have the yeah. time, you can review it. Well, that way you're, you're not going to get blindsided with it before the I'd next meeting. I'd say meeting. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Probably from Friday, the next five to six days will be the worst. So, and then it should, I should start getting better. So starting this Friday? Yeah. Okay. Um, I kind of pushes you. Would uh, would you have an opportunity to possibly review it before? Yeah. yeah. I will do my best to get something to you, at least for those two. Okay. Those two sections changed. You can send it to me too, but I just can't well, send it. I can't. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to everybody. Okay. But I, 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 the main reason I was asking was trying to get you something before you go, before your right. medical thing. Uh, yeah. That way you'll have you'll have it, and it'll be there whenever you feel ready. Okay. I didn't want to get it to you right before the next, the last, the, whatever right. next meeting you show up to, and be blind, and well, I haven't had a chance to review okay. it. Whatever, so. I'll do my best. I won't make that the very next one, but I'll do my best to try. Well, I just want to try to get you something as soon as possible. So that was the reason I asked. Okay. Okay. Is this okay with everybody? And then we set another date when we see how much we've got done on the fourth. Is that being too risky, or do we need to set a second meeting now? She could, Rhonda could go ahead and advertise two meetings at once. Okay. Uh, if we went ahead and picked a, a, a second date. Mm -hmm. Oh, she took my. Barbara's I mean, Barbara, thank you. <laughs> okay. You want to tentatively set a meeting on the 18th at 5? I need to hear some opinions. Good. I'm good. Hopefully. Jeff is looking. Um, I'm fine. 
Um, I don't know if what time? If five thir five's kind of hard for me. Well, I should be. I'm good. I'm not. You won't working. be here. I'm not working. <laughs> if I can come, I can come at five. So. Well, you follow <laughs> the doctor's orders. Yeah. If Grady, how about you? Is it hard for you to get here for, by five? No. Okay. Five on the 18th and the 4th. And we'll just see. We may cancel that 18th. If something comes up that's a conflict for somebody else or uh, <coughs> for what? Did you say four? Five. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. On the 4th and the 18th. Should we go ahead? Well, go ahead. I was going to ask if Ronna should go ahead and go ahead and advertise for the 18th, or wait till our meeting on the fourth. I think and then she, have Rhonda her should advertise. wait. But, but we get it. We we still have enough time. We still that's still plenty. Of, that's five days. I was thinking of the cost. I think it cost us so much per announcement. Correct, and we would be saving. Do we have to pay? By, yes. That's, that's a very good point, Ms. Miller. And we we, are, to, we I, are. I can tell you, we're running short on money right. for public hearing notices. I, she, that's a very valid point. So I, I would think we wouldn't set that one. I agree with you until we see. But yes, we're 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 out of public notice money almost. Well, so if we can get two for the price of one, that's the most logical way to go. Correct. I, I would just set the one on the, whatever it was, the fourth, be my opinion, and go from there. Well, I'm just afraid that if we set it in advance, Karen, that somebody will get sick, somebody won't have oh, okay. a forum. Okay. Then you'd have to cancel it and then send another notice. Yeah, I mean, and then how does that work? Okay. Okay. Justin, do you have anything else to say? I just want to make sure as far as... Yeah, clear My instructions from, from this committee is for me to go ahead and amend the two sections that I've highlighted in the resolution to mimic the state requirements and then email that to this body, um, hopefully by the end of the week. Um, and then if I hear no other directions or instruction, then uh, just see what we, we all come up with at the next meeting. Is that, is that correct? Yes, and as you read it though, if, as you read it, I'll talk loud so you can hear me. Um, no. If you see you a hot talk. button hot button item, you're gonna let us know. That's, that's yeah. true. Yeah, he's gonna work on that. And um, is that okay with everyone? We're doing this as a group. We're backing Justin here, right? Yep. Okay. And if you have a special email you want this sent to after a meeting, would you uh, have, because I know I want a special email that you want a conversation with Justin, our phone numbers or anything. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I have one other item okay. I'd like to yes. discuss with uh, Justin. There's nobody here, but. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, and this has to do with the uh, the amendment to illicit discharge resolution mm -hmm. that you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that resolution, there's not a definition for discarding. And I'd like to be able to see that in that resolution, please. Yeah. I'm sorry, in, in the illicit discharge resolution, there's no definition for discarding? Discarding, yes. Okay. Uh, it was page four yeah, under uh, 2M, discarding lawn clippings, leaves, or branches. But there's no definition for the word discarding. It's not defined. So I'd appreciate if that could be done. I think that was the one where people were concerned about their driveways. No, I've not heard that. It's in there. I've got it online. Um, I mean, have you received complaints or? No, 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 no. Well, to do that, um, to make, or to add, I guess, to add the definition for discarding, mm -hmm. that would have to be presented to the county commission for approval. Oh. So we'll have to go through. I can't just go in there, since it's a resolution that was approved by the county commission, I can't just go in there and add that. 
Okay, so, on so the, you on can't amend that yourself. It has to go before the commission. It has to be approved, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So right. unfortunately, resolutions aren't that easy to, to work with. I mean, okay. uh, I could change it in my office and change it on the website, but right. it wouldn't be approval. It wouldn't right. be um, you know, set in stone right. until the, the commission approves it. So okay. um, I don't know the, the best process to, to address that unless it's brought up at a full commission meeting on public items or public input on yeah. items not on the agenda. Okay. Might be the best approach. I, I don't want to. Okay. Well, thank you. I don't know about that. That could that could create another ad hoc committee. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the only way I know legally to uh, amend a resolution to get. Uh, and then each resolution has to have its own meeting. Well, not, it doesn't have to have an ad hoc committee, but it would have no, to have no, an no. approval process from the full commission. You know, a vote, yes. So you say it doesn't have to go to the public to change, to put in a definition? No, well, unless just, I, unless just public input on items on the agenda, I mean, the public can speak the end. Uh, that's the only way I know. And we're public, so we can do it ourselves. Like I said, I, I just can't make that change in house and it be okay. Be uh, legal. Okay. Before we dismiss, anything else? I make a motion to adjourn. Amen. Okay, you can second it. Second. <laughs> okay. She's she's ahead of me. Okay, meetings adjourned.